Okay, let's get into rigid body dynamics. Okay, now so far, we've only been talking about particle dynamics. Okay, particle kinematics, which is chapter 12, and then particle kinetics, okay, which is the chapter 13, 14, and 15. Okay, we talked about new second law method, work energy method, and the impulse momentum method. Okay. Now, let's get into the second big category of object. Okay. It's called rigid body. Now, the only difference between rigid body and a particle is that rigid body now has rotation while it is translating okay, along a path. Okay. So, before, for a particle, the object could be just traveling along a path without rotation okay, on its own. And now for rigid body, this thing can rotate as well. Okay? It can rotate in any direction, any along any axis. Okay? So it's called rigid body. Now under rigid body, just like particle dynamics, okay, you can look at Kinematics first, and then kinetics. Kinematics, again, is uh, concerned with the geometry of motion. So we're going to study the velocity and acceleration. Okay, And that's the next chapter, chapter 16. And for velocity and acceleration, we're going to look at the linear uh, portion, as well as the angular portion, which is something kind of new now. Okay? So angular velocity and angular acceleration. And then we'll move on to the next three chapters, which deal with kinetics. Okay. And just like before, we're going to use the three methods. Using the second law method, work energy, and impulse momentum method. Okay, the subsequent three chapters. Now, for second law, uh, we're going to look at linear and angular um, components. Okay, now for linear portion, it's just like before, f equals m a, Except now, this acceleration is the acceleration at the center of gravity, Eg. Okay, and we'll analyze that later on. For angular portion, we're going to use the equation, kind of similar to Newton's second law, just that we take the angular component, okay, and it's called the moment. Right, some moment m about any point, O equals I alpha. I is called the mass moment of inertia okay, taken about the same point O times alpha. Alpha is angular acceleration. Okay, now we explore this later on. Now, let's now focus on kinematics. Now the first step and looking at rigid body kinematics is by looking at something that's rotating about a fixed point. Okay. So rigid body kinematics. Okay. And particularly we're gonna first look at something that rotates about a fixed point. Okay? That's the, the easiest, quickest way to look at angular portion right, of motion. Okay? A quick example is your clock. Okay? Let's say your second hand or minute hand. Right? Okay, this hand is rotating about the fixed point right here. Okay? So, for any point along this hand right here, you can look at the velocity and acceleration. Okay? That is the linear portion. Okay? So, I can draw, okay, let's say, this minute hand or second hand is rotating clockwise so at this 
point right here at the tip. Okay, I have a certain velocity. Right? And then at this point right here, velocity is always zero. So at any point along the pan, I can draw the velocity. Okay? And it's a linear relationship. Okay? Velocity, 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 velocity. Point. So what's the relationship between velocity and angular velocity? Yeah. This is something called omega. Okay? Angular velocity. We can also look at acceleration. Acceleration, A, and the angular counterpart of acceleration is alpha. Okay, now let's look at the relationship between them. For angular portion, okay, for a rigid body that's rotating about a fixed point, okay, just like the linear relationship, okay, angular. You can look at displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So linear displacement, we use S. Velocity, we use B. Acceleration, A. The angular counterpart for linear, uh, for displacement, is simply theta. Okay, angle. Okay, so how much radiance? Okay, you have trap. Okay, so this change. Theta. And then acceleration, omega. Angular acceleration is alpha. Velocity is defined as v as dt. Acceleration is dv dt. Okay. Angular velocity, just like the linear portion, is time rate of change of angle. And then alpha, angular acceleration, is the omega dt. Okay. Okay. <coughs> now, back in the linear <coughs> um, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. <coughs> okay. And we studied the particle acceleration, particularly. When this particle is experiencing constant acceleration, then we have those three algebraic equations, right, that relate acceleration, velocity, and the displacement. Same thing for the angular portion, okay? If <coughs> alpha is constant, and we have constant angular acceleration, then those three equation applies also, okay? And we just map okay, each of these quantities to the angular counterpart, okay? So that means that, for example, we have uh, back in the particle kinetic, we have this equation, right? 2a delta s, right? So now we have Omega square equals omega not square plus two alpha delta theta. That's all. And then we have B equals V not plus A T. And for the linear portion, now for the angular counterpart, we have omega equals omega not plus alpha T. <coughs> And then this last equation, S naught plus V naught T plus one half A T square. So now this becomes theta equals theta naught plus omega naught T plus one half alpha T square. So these are the three equations they can use for a rigid body rotating about a fixed point. If alpha is constant.